GTA 5, one of the few games I know where you can have a horrible parachuting accident and then walk out of the hospital just three seconds later. Just before I begin the video, I want to say a massive thank you to Danny on PC and Larco Gaming for lending me some footage for this video. I somehow managed to break my PVR in the process of setting it up. I'm not sure what I did, but those guys' channels are in the description, so make sure you check them out. Little bit of background on the game. GTA 5 is set in Los Santos, which is actually a fictional representation of Los Angeles, and it's the biggest GTA 5 map to date. You'll have probably noticed that inside the game box you actually get a map and it doesn't give a true representation of how big the map in game it actually is. Until you start driving around, until you start walking around the city going up into the desert uh, up into the north, you really don't get a full sense of how big the map actually is. And going on from the grand scale, the graphics aren't too bad either. You get 720p at 60 frames per second, I believe. And considering the hardware the game is actually running on, that's a really good target to have actually hit by the Rockstar developers. The game doesn't look too bad. Fair enough, the textures are a bit muddy. And I think you can probably tell by this video that when you record the footage in 720p, it isn't amazing. But in-game, the raw footage of what you're actually seeing on the screen when you're playing, it's a really, really big achievement to be able to even get anything so sort of graphically good out of these consoles that are nearly six and seven years old now. The content that's available to you in the world, especially in the city at least, is again a testament to Rockstar's developing ability because they've managed to squeeze so much out of this old hardware. There is so much more you can interact with in this world in Los Santos than what you could in Liberty City in GTA 4. Having said that, there are some limitations of course with these current generation consoles. I found that there's just not enough going on in the map sometimes to sort of keep me interested. I.e. in GTA 4 and especially in San Andreas at least, I remember you can walk down the sidewalk and you can mow down about 20, 30, 40 people in the space of 100 feet. In Los Santos in GTA 5, the RAM memory of the consoles is really limited. I have to say there are some things that I would really like to see. The render distance as well for the graphics is really limited too. So sometimes you can be looking at your minimap in the middle of a police chase and see all the police cars in front of you on a straight road, but you can't actually see them on the screen in front of you. You can only see them on the minimap. That again is sort of it just being held back by the RAM. I think it could be fixed by the next generation consoles, and most likely PC as well, but of course we don't even know if the game is going to be released on those platforms. So moving on from the graphical gameplay, let's talk about the actual gameplay and the story. So I'm just going to let you know, I'm not going to put any spoilers in here. So if you haven't actually played the game yet, I'm not going to spoil the whole story for you. Just going to give you a bit of a background on how it sort of plays out. You basically get to play as three characters, and I think that's a really good decision by Rockstar. In the previous games, there was only one protagonist, and you had to play through all the missions with that one guy. With having three different characters, it really gave a sort of a varied sense of what you could do, because obviously each mission is tailored to each specific sort of character in the game. And of course, you don't actually have to play as these characters just in the story mode. You're able to use them in free roam at any time you want, as long as you're not in a police chase. As I found, I thought it'd be a really good idea to try and get in a massive police chase and then simply switch to another character. And you can't really do that. So I managed to get into the army base and uh, then got shot by a tank. So it, it didn't end well. Having the three different characters as well gives you three different points of view. So it's like watching, I don't know, it feels to me it's like more like I'm watching a movie with all the different cutscenes with different characters. And I sort of bonded with the characters a little bit more, especially Trevor, because I absolutely love Trevor. I find myself playing as him all the time. He's just a crazy motherfucker. Yeah, and those kind of things, it just makes you sort of immerse into the game that little bit more than what you did with previous versions of the game. One thing I will say as well is that during the gameplay, if you are sort of on the tail of the cops, it's actually much harder to lose them this time around than it was in GTA 4. Still very easy for you to go down an alleyway and they'll lose you pretty much instantly. Or if uh, you're under some bridges or something like that, undercover, you can get out of sight of the helicopter and get yourself away from it all. But, but in the police chases, it's harder to outrun them and I find they're much more aggressive. And they can actually box you in. They have this tactic where one will drive in front and behind and two will come in at the sides and they will slow down and actually stop you. It's a really quite a good tactic and then of course you've got nowhere to go. Of course that's all programmed through the AI system and that isn't too bad in the game either. I have to say the police now sort of interact with other people in the city so that if there's massive things going on it could be going on five feet from you. Like if a car crashes into the police car accidentally it'll actually drive after it and get the guy to stop. So they've put some real work into sort of having a look at the AI and making sure it works much better than it did in GTA 4. 
The graphics engine that we did see in GTA 4 has been brought across, so some of the more epic things that actually happen, as you saw in the intro, it does look much more realistic than it did in previous versions of GTA, and it's really expanding on what they have. But as I said, again, it's still limited by those uh, current generation consoles, and I feel if Rockstar were to release it on next generation consoles, the whole gaming experience would be 10 times better. Now I still haven't actually completed the story mode yet and I don't know of anybody and it must be extremely difficult. I don't know of anybody who's actually completed 100% of the game because there are so many things to do it's going to take a very long time for you to complete all 100% of the game. And I think that's going to become even harder for everyone else to do once Rockstar released the multiplayer side of this game in about a week's time. People are just going to flock across to that because of course you can fuck around with your friends instead. But that's all I've really got to say guys, GTA 5 is an absolutely fantastic game and if you haven't played it so far I really do recommend you try it out. And that brings me to the end of the video so thanks for watching, likes and comments are always appreciated but until next time my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.